welcome back to the Zelenko Report for the second half of the show, the better half, I might add. I'm Ann Vandersteel, and I'm super excited about my next guest, Jean Nolan, country music star and, and songwriter. I, I kind of slowly introduced him a little bit before the break here, but he truly is inspirational, and his Inspired Tribe podcast is really second to none and growing very, very quickly. He grew up in Austria. He loved country music then, and he felt very strong and ha has a very deep connection to this country, which is why he lives up in the beautiful state of Tennessee. And of course, after releasing his critically acclaimed album, Born Ready and playing on multiple national tours, he and his wife, Kristen, decided that uh, when they weren't touring between Florida and California, that he'd be writing songs and staying around home more with their kids and working with some of Nashville's hottest talent. Well, he's now launched his own podcast, which I've been a guest on a few times, and I'm privileged now to bring him here on the Zelenko Report for a talk about sovereignty and freedom. Jean, it's wonderful to have you. Thank you so much for taking time from your schedule to join us here on the Zelenko Report. Oh, Anne, thank you so much for having me. It's an honor and a pleasure. I love your show. I love what you do. And I love our conversation. So this is a real treat for me. Absolutely. For, well, mutual. But I don't. my audience may or may not know you. Um, I'm a, I love country music and I've absolutely fallen in love with, with you, what you represent, your family lifestyle and your music, I think is absolutely stunning. I'm a huge Keith Urban fan. So it was sort of hard to find somebody that I could go, I can listen to this guy before Keith now. Don't tell him I said that, but. <laughs> I won't. But th thank you so much. Wow. Wow. I really appreciate that. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a big one. Even my husband was shocked when I said it. I said, uh-oh, I think Keith just got knocked down a rung. But anyhow, let's find out. Tell us about John Nolan. Uh, what inspires you? See, that's the question. I, I usually don't really like to talk about myself that much because there's so much important things to talk about. But what inspires me more than anything um, is the relationship with my creator. That's really where all the inspiration comes from. And it sounds corny and cheesy, but when people ask me why I do what I do, why we do what we do, is literally because every morning, that's my first uh, my first action is I get up and I connect with the Creator, and that's that's where everything begins. And what God puts in front of me and in front of us, that is what we do. So that's literally where the in spirit inspiration comes from. But it is also an observation of the world uh, that we live in, and that's been going on for for me for as long as I can think and as long as I can remember. And always having this deep desire of, to improve things, to improve the world, and knowing that it starts with me. But then, everything you do, everything the you know the, the Zelenko Foundation does, and so many other people now in this field, is, is I think uh, coming from the same place of knowing it could be so much better, knowing we could have such, such you know a, a wonderful, beautiful, peaceful world, and really that that's what drives me every day. Well, it, I have to say, I wake up feeling the same way that you've got to connect with God first, um, sort of take your marching orders, if you will. He did give us some very specific instructions in Genesis. He told us he was putting us in charge, basically, of everything on the land, the air, and the water. I call it the law. And that's really what it is. Our, our laws are all biblical-based. Our foundation, uh, founding documents are all based on the Bible. Um, sovereignty is something that God gave us. He gave us our freedom, Jean. And I know you wanted to talk about, you know, the exploration of the journey back to true freedom, back to sovereignty. What does it mean to you? Well, I think, um, and this is going to sound radical because it is radical and radical means from the root. And that's where all the changes need to come from, not surface changes. I have a radical um, suggestion is that we go back to 100% personal responsibility and 100% self-sufficiency. And in the light of, you know, we are, we are now experiencing so much chaos in the world because we are depending on systems that are outside of our control and that were never meant to be for our benefit, but for our enslavement. And so sovereignty, I think, is the realization where we come from, who created us, and that we were given those rights and the freedom uh, inherently. It's not something that we need to work for, that we need to uh, earn, or that we need to ask permission for. It's actually something we need to realize is inside of us, has been, you know, we came with it. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, this this is something that we, we you know, we're not getting taught in school, not even um, in, in most mainstream religions today that that's that's kind of being taken out of the equation because it makes people free when they realize that's how they were born and part of that freedom is full responsibility is you know how do we feed ourselves 
you know, are we independent when it comes to the most the most basic necessities in our lives? Water, food, shelter, power, education, very, very important. And so part of our mission is to remind people of their sovereignty and freedom, but also provide solutions on how this can happen because it needs to happen now. I believe the future is local. And so local communities um, creating synergies, symbiosis and, and creating a, a you know new systems in their own little um, own little corners of the world. I think that is so important right now, and that's part of our mission more than ever before. You're speaking my language. I know you're speaking the language of General Flynn as well, who constantly talks about the fact that local action has national impact. And I had a conversation with Dr. Zelenko's brother, Frank Zelenko, last night, who's joining our advisory board, specifically in the community development side, because we were talking about these very things, John, where we really need to get back to self-sustainability, farming, uh, helping one another. Uh, charity begins with your village and, and helping each other. We don't need people to be dependent on government and EBT cards and food stamps and everything else. There's plenty of charity and plenty of abundance when the, the free people aren't being burdened with uh, regulations, rules, and taxes, which are taking away from our ability to help ourselves and others. So in terms of exercising doing business as a sovereign, how would you go about doing your day-to-day -day business? Well, that's an, that's an interesting question because my wife and I have been in this, like you, for many years now. And um, there was a time when we completely detached from what you might consider the system and we've done this um, on purpose and consciously and lived a life outside of, you know, um, outside of really what anyone might consider even the basic infrastructure and system it was very interesting. And then we we felt the call very strongly to insert ourselves into the into society more and go really where light needs to shine, where change needs to happen. But that sovereignty in, in business is an interesting thing. As, as true sovereign beings, commerce like as it is defined in in the legal system doesn't happen in that way see we we are not legal fictions that engage in contracts and do all these things as natural beings um we operate very differently as indigenous tribes and we were indigenous tribes not too long ago you know we come from strong indigenous peoples in europe and all, in europe and all other places in the world we had natural synergies and system in place and that you know you you see that in local communities people tend to barter also they tend to exchange services or they tend to pay in different forms we're so focused on the commercial system we're so focused on the dollar which is you know a tool of enslavement the federal reserve dollar for example or any central mm -hmm. bank currency so this sovereign um, business to me is first and foremost returning to true human values that's more than anything and then of course how you detach from things like the irs how you detach from incorporation that is a very intense process at this time although people find the right ways to do this uh, the government doesn't recognize it because most of them don't know it anymore this is also part of this whole game that um th this legal fiction system is is also within the system is not known to many they don't understand it the bureaucrats don't understand it the irs agents don't understand it <laughs> and so we are on this learning curve right now i would right. encourage people to really connect exchange knowledge what you put out uh, in our interview i think is very very interesting um but it begins here it begins in our hearts and in 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 our personal lives it, it does absolutely and it's up to us to decide whether we want to be free or not and declare it. God gave us our freedom. He gives us our rights. We formed government and therefore they are at our public, our beck and call and our, and our public service. Um, I wanna talk about something that you and I had touched on during our interview with respect to titles of nobility. I'm gonna take a little, uh, go down a rabbit hole with you here for a minute on the 13th amendment. And um, I know that I've got a bunch of different uh, graphics and stuff that talk about the 13th amendment, but. The titles, titles of nobility is, is all about the fact, and I'm going to summarize it very, very cleanly, that if you have an esquire, a squire, or you're considered a noble, have some sort of title of nobility, like an attorney is an esquire, you are forbidden under the 13th Amendment, the original 13th Amendment, to 
serve in public government office. In fact, it is suggested for folks to go and do the research themselves. I've had a lot of documents where people have done the deep dive research and they've found that during the period of 1818 through 1876, a number of states ratified the 13th Amendment, and this was as you led up through and, and past the end of the Civil War, saying that they agreed they did not want to have titles of nobility um, serving in the in the U.S. Uh, government. They just didn't believe it should be in any public office whatsoever. Um, in fact, I know that if, if Heather's, I, there she is, she's putting some of them up on the screen right now, but this runs through a variety of states like Connecticut, South Carolina, and others that ratified this 13th Amendment. And then sometime after in 1878, they changed the 13th Amendment to basically just saying it's all about freeing the slaves. And they deleted the language, but you can still find it, and it's encouraged for people to go and, and do, the, do the due diligence in their law, um, law libraries, et cetera. John, if you could verify this to be true, and let's just assume that it is true, and I believe it is, how should we the people respond to every law that has been put on the books since 1878? Well, you know, it would it would represent fraud because it was a, it's a fraudulent law, and you know, any any law that violates um, the Constitution and the the fundamental Bill of Rights is, you know, by definition fraud and null and void. I mean, this is a very simple answer. And and we could we could take this to everything that's happened since, or we could take it into a smaller window of time. Let's just look at the current ad administration, you know? Everything they do is based on a, on a lie and on fraud, which is And so any, everything they have done is null and void. Now, this concept is so overwhelming for, for most people that when you say, but we can't do that, why not? How do you think or propose we're actually going to turn the ship around? Because we're now uh, burdened with a million rules and regulations and and useless enslaving things that are, uh, you know, that are literally putting us down every day. Yes, we need to turn all of this around. I would suggest actually that the original Constitution, as it was written uh, for and by the people, is not intact and in place anymore and hasn't been for a very long time. Because the, the the United States government has been turned into a corporation and the Constitution is now basically the operating manual and they change it as they see fit with their board of directors because it isn't intact the way we see it. The Republic is somewhere legally or lawfully intact in the background and we need to find a ways of how to reinstitute and reactivate and remember these things. It is happening on a large scale. But to go back to my answer, everything that is based on fraud is null and void. Everything that violates your rights is null and void. It's just that's the maxim of law. I mean, that's how it's, you know, how we as a society have operated for a very long time. I want to I want to shift gears here for a second. I want to talk about a uh, foundation, Anastasia Foundation. This is something you you hold near and dear to your heart. I asked you for some social media, some websites that were important to you. I looked at this website. And, you know, if you first look at it, you go, oh, my gosh, this sounds like a bunch of um, liberal stuff. Like, wait a minute, what's going on here? But you take it and you really read it. And it's really what we're talking about here. But I'd like you to walk us through what this means in terms of building the ringing cedars of Russia movement in the English speaking world, because some people might think we're selling out to Putin now. No, no, not at all. As a matter of fact, the ringing cedars books, uh, Christine and I, my wife read over 10 years ago. We've been rereading them. And it's one of the most um, significant series of books that I've ever read. It, it actually speaks about an original culture on this earth that, uh, according to antagonist in the books, which these are not uh, uh, these are not fictional books. These are um, more more or less matter of fact books. Uh, Anastasia is, is is the main character in the books, and she speaks about this original culture that we once all shared in the beginning. And you could you can absolutely tie it back to the Garden of Eden and to the original plan that the Creator had for us and how to live on Earth. And so much has been destroyed on purpose and hidden um, from us that is true history, and that all comes out in the books very beautifully, and it leads to this realization um, that I pointed out in the beginning that we need to get 100% self-reliable and self-responsible, personal responsibility. So Anastasia in these books lays out 
a way of life where um, she asks a very interesting question. She says, how come that every living being on this earth has a dedicated space to live, but we don't? We're the only ones who need to purchase land and who need to uh, work our butts off to pay for a mortgage. But it's our dominion. I mean, we're, we're in charge of this earth, yet we don't have a space to live on it. And the United States, for example, is a perfect, perfect example. So many people, so much vast uh, amounts of land, and yet we can't figure out a way that a family gets two and a half acres. This is not socialism. This is our, our birthright, two and a half acres to live on, create their own um, food, you know, have beautiful permaculture food forests, have a space for their families, have villages with, with schools that bring real education, that raise happy children. And um, this is not kumbaya. This is all based in very practical, it's, I call it practical spirituality. And the Anastasia books have been sold, you know, tens of millions of times ar uh, around the world over the last 25 years. And Gabriel Miguel started this Anastasia Foundation in the United States and is bringing people together that want to live in a more harm harmonious, natural way. And they're all very common sense, practical people. As a matter of fact, they share so many quote unquote conservative values because these are all deeply rooted in our culture. And it is a culture that actually glorifies God and his creation in the right way um, and, and in a respectful way. So I'm, I'm a big, um, big supporter of this movement because it actually leads us back to us. And in combination with that, we have recently part, partnered with Jim Gale from Food Forest Abundance who is bringing this vision of permaculture food forests uh, to the mainstream. They're helping to actually turn lawns of everyday Americans into yep. food forests and make them self-sustainable. So this is where our heart's at, and I believe this is so important at this time. I, I love this because I've actually told my husband, um, I said, we need to reach out to all of our neighbors in the community and start saying, okay, my yard is going to do squash. Your yard can do zucchini. The other guy can do tomatoes. Somebody can do lettuce and start, you know, uh, f fertilizing our futures with real food. Because as you know, the uh, shortages are coming. They're real. They've been manufactured. This isn't just, this isn't God lashing out. This is man being evil. And it is that spiritual warfare and it's playing itself out in real time. But I love the fact that you are espousing this and supporting it, Jean, because it's clearly necessary and it's clearly important. I'd like to, uh, we've got a few seconds left. Where can folks follow you, find you, and engage with you? Well, first of all, thank you so much, Anne, for your beautiful words and for having me. And thank you for this opportunity. If you go to YouTube, uh, the Inspired channel on YouTube, so it's just the word Inspired and we're gonna be the first search result. You can find us on Telegram under Inspired. You can find us on Locals and Rumble under Inspired. And you know wherever you feel inspired to join us, please do, we'd love to have you. We love to hear from you, so please comment. Uh, this is a tribe, we call it a tribe just because we feel like it's extended family and we're in this yeah. together. Uh, this, is, this is not a, a soapbox here. We're really in interaction with our wonderful viewers. Thank you so much, John. It's a pleasure to have you on, and I look forward to seeing you again very soon.